Hey everybody, it's me Lone, back with another Fallout 76 video, and today at the time of this recording, there was a brand new update that went live for Fallout 76. The full patch notes are in the description below if you are interested, but what I want to do in today's video is highlight 10 key changes and fixes that were implemented as part of this update, just so you can see them on the screen with actual gameplay. So if this video does help you, if you enjoy it, please like it, I would really appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new, but with all that out of the way, let's get to the video. Okay, so the first and arguably biggest change from today's update is the incorporation of a brand new snapping toggle as part of camp building. I'll read the patch notes for this change word for word first, and then I'll show you it in action. So snapping toggle, a button has been added to the UI when placing or editing certain camp objects, like fences, bar sets, weapon racks, light boxes, and wall letters, that allows players to decide whether they would like to enable or disable whether they will snap to other objects. Going forward, players no longer need to decide between snapping and non-snapping versions of these objects in their build menus, and can instead simply place one version and decide whether to toggle snapping on or off. So this is really going to make placing down these objects so, so much easier. It's literally the flick of a switch. So let me show you this right now. I'm at my little new makeshift camp. And I think the easiest example to showcase this new feature is by placing down these fences because I like to place these down a lot in the past. But if I ever wanted to build a perimeter, like this is how it used to work, right? I wanted to get as close as possible to that particular fence, but it just automatically snaps. And as you can see, sometimes it doesn't allow you to place it down at all. Sometimes it might, like if I move the position and go here, not, not even there either. So it can get a little bit finicky at times, right? But now, um, what I'm going to do, as you can see at the bottom left hand corner there, it says toggle snapping. So I'm going to turn that off. And now I can get as close as I want to that particular fence in any kind of position, right? And so long as it, as it can be placed down normally and there's nothing else obstructing it, it can be placed down without the need or the automatic snapping. So it just makes it a lot, a lot easier to be placing down like these fences in particular. As you can see, like I'm building my own perimeter in my own shape. And, the, and if I go back to snapping, right? There's no more issues like this or instances like that where I simply can't place these objects down just because of the positioning. Um, so way, way easier. I really like this. And as it says in the patch notes, it's the same for fences, bar sets, weapon racks, light boxes, and wall letters. So I'm sure this is going to be a welcome change to a lot of you um, camp builders out there, but definitely something that I wanted to showcase because now if I turn off uh, snapping again, look at that. I can place this wherever I, wherever I want and it just makes it much, much easier and a breeze to kind of place down these particular camp objects. So let's move on to the second change. Okay, so for the second change, we are currently at West Tech because there was a small change made to the FEV production labs downstairs if you are someone that has completed the Steel Rain quest line, because you know as part of Steel Rain, and specifically the Catalyst quest, you are required to go down here to effectively complete the entire expansion. And there were certain areas that were accessible to you as part of that, but when you completed the Catalyst and, and the entirety of Steel Rain, certain areas were actually locked off. Now that is completely changed. So I'm going to go through this area here. Bunch of super mutants have respawned, so they tend to respawn in this particular area here, which is totally fun. So they completely bombard you. If you've already been down here, that is. They, they tend to respawn just here. So now that they're dead, let's go through here, right? And you will know that you were already able to do this even after you completed the Catalyst and, you know, before this particular update. But what was closed off to you was this door here. This was actually inaccessible. Now you can go through it and you might find some more super mutants that you can kill. And I've actually found le legendary super mutants down here. So it's just another area where you can go down and get some XP farming and get some legendaries, which makes West Tech even better. And then yes, and then you can get super mutants that actually can go into there and hopefully they're not too far in as this guy is over here because I don't believe you can actually get back through these laser grids, but they can walk back through and then you can kind of kill them because that one's closed off. This one is still closed off here. And then the hatch, which you can hop down as part of the quest line, that's still inaccessible. But still, it's an additional room, an additional area for you to be killing some super mutants, getting some more XP and some more legendaries. 
which makes, to be honest, it makes West Tech even better. And then yes, by the time that you're down here killing all these enemies, and then you go back upstairs, they should have res respawned all the other super units as part of West Tech. Though what I suggest is actually leaving West Tech completely, waiting a minute, and then going back inside, just to make sure that you don't have any performance issues. But yes, this is a, a great little addition for West Tech now, and it just makes it a little bit better when it comes to XP farming and legendary farming. So let's move on to the third change. Okay, so next up we're at the Wayward for the third change. And the reason why we're here is because you know this is a location that's important for collecting gold bullion. Specifically because there is a vendor here called Smiley that actually sells you gold bullion in exchange for caps once a week just so you can get some more gold bullion week to week. But what was happening before, because if you remember in the previous update, the limits on gold bullion in terms of how much you can actually keep on your character or store at any one time were raised from 5,000 gold bullion to 10,000 gold bullion. But what was happening was that Smiley was still not recognizing um, that you were able to store more, more gold bullion. So if you did hold more than 5,000 gold bullion, he would actually not sell you any gold bullion thinking you're at the cap already. Now that's been fixed and it's been changed. So if you do happen to have more than 5,000 gold bullion, which I don't believe I actually do right now, so I can't... <laughs> I do. You know what? I want to spend the caps, spend 6,000 caps or whatever it is, just for the purposes of this video. So what I'm going to do is say I'm interested, right? And it's 6,000 caps. I was right. Yeah, so give me 300 gold bullion for 6,000 caps and it's going to work now. I've just used up a lot of my caps, so that sucks. But for the video, it's important. As you can see, I was able to get uh, 300 caps successful, or gold bullion rather, successfully, even though I was beyond that original 5,000 gold bullion limit. So that's really nice for those of you that are still trying to grind out gold bullion to get all your Hellcat, Hellcat uh, power armor plans, all the mods for that power armor, and all the other stuff that you can get from the other gold bullion vendors. So let's go on to the fourth thing now, which is actually a fix. Okay, so we're outside chilling with Bessie for this one because this is actually a fix that I can't necessarily showcase because the issue has now been resolved. So in the previous version of the game, some of you might have had an issue where your carry weight wasn't being properly reflected in the Pip-Boy and that was causing certain issues with sprinting and other stuff. I never had the issue, so I can't necessarily say what the full extent of it was. If you did have it, just let us know in the comments below so we can understand you know, the reasoning behind it. But now, hopefully, that should be resolved. So your carry weight should be properly reflected in the pit boy and that means that hopefully you don't have any of those kind of carry weight issues now so that's really nice a nice little you know quality fix for all of you out there that were experiencing that issue for the next change in the game let's go to my camp so now for the fifth fix that was incorporated as part of this update, and this is probably going to be very appreciated by a lot of you out there. In the previous version of the game, there was an issue where if you used a workbench, there was a good chance that your character would actually be become stuck. So your controls would be unresponsive, you wouldn't be able to move, and you had to fast travel essentially to get out of that locked state. That issue has now been resolved, and for me, I always encountered it on an armor workbench. Sometimes it was a chemistry workbench, almost never the weapons workbench. So I do want to use the armor workbench as an example, but I'm going to craft here. You can swap to modify if you want to. It happened on both of those menus. But now when I exit, I'm not getting locked out of my character. And again, it's the same for any of these other workbenches. So the chemistry workstation here, I'll go to craft something, exit, and I'm not getting stuck. And the Tinkerer's workbench, I would encounter it too. Just for the sake of uh, completeness, I'll use modify on this particular example, even though you can't really modify anything. And then I'll try and exit out of it and it works now. So previously you would get stuck in that state, but now that issue has been resolved. So there's no need to fast travel away anymore. Um, and it's, it's an issue that, you know, I think it's really good to have resolved right now. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this is for you legends out there who have already completed this season in Fallout 76. But as you know, towards the end and also right at the end of the season as rewards, you can get two particular power armor skins. The first one you encounter is the Enlightened Mind power armor paint. And the next one is the just the Mind power armor. So the one right at the end with all the other uh, items in this bundle. So there was an issue with these two particular paints where if you applied them to your your power armor as a skin, certain resistances actually wouldn't work. Specifically, I believe it was radiation resistance, but it might have been one other. 
All you need to know that these two power armor skins, which I don't have yet right now because I haven't been grinding enough, but these two particular skins now have their resistances apply properly, or like it doesn't actually override the resistances of the power armor you're applying the skins to. So that's a really nice touch for those of you that do enjoy these kind of dolphin uh, power armors um, and, and the skin specifically as part of this season. So that issue has been resolved, which is really nice. So next up, we have another change that I can't really showcase to you again because it's hard to, especially since I don't have the particular legendary effect in question, which is being changed. But I am standing next to a weapons workbench and that makes it relevant. So as you know in the previous update for 76, there are a few new additions of new legendary attributes to the game, particularly for weapons, and one of them was a second star effect that was called Last Shot. And Last Shot means that the last round in your magazine has a 25% chance to deal double damage. Now in the previous version of the game before this update, Last shot as a second star was able to spawn, I believe on most if not all ranged weapons out there. But as part of this update, a change has been made to that. So the patch notes say, legendary weapons, single shot ranged weapons can no longer spawn with the last shot legendary attribute. So think of weapons like the dragon for instance, which are just single shot. Now they can no longer get that second star for last shot. So if any of you did happen to get that particular weapon with that particular effect on it, Technically, you have a legacy now. But yes, that is a change that I wanted to highlight because don't be trying to roll single shot weapons thinking you're going to, you're going to get last shot as a second star because that's not going to happen now anymore. So we're at number 8 now, and this one is another fix for certain weapons that weren't able to be displayed at weapon displays at your camp. I don't know which weapons in the previous version of the game were actually susceptible to this issue and simply could not be displayed at weapon displays. You probably know of certain weapons in your game which you simply could not display, but for me, it was certain heavy guns that when it came to the heavy weapon stand, I couldn't actually display. You would try to assign them to the particular stand or the particular display, and it simply would not work. It would not appear. But now I've tested this with pretty much all my heavy weapons and I cannot replicate the issue that I had before. So it seems like this is fixed and if you've had this issue with if it's not a heavy weapon or other weapons in the game, let me know and let me know if your issue has been fixed now because it should have been. So now I can display any heavy weapon, not to say that I had a particular issue with the Gauss minigun before, I'm just saying that I can't replicate it with any of my heavy guns anymore. So let's try this Junkies 50 cal. You know, that's not causing any issues at all. We'll try the cry later, for instance. That's not causing any issues anymore. So I've tried out pretty much all of my heavy guns and I can't replicate it. The flamer, for instance, that's showing up as normal. So hopefully this issue is also resolved for any of you that were encountering weapons that simply could not be displayed at your displays at your camp. So let's move on to the ninth fix. Alrighty, so number nine is a quick one for the uniquely named legendary power fist called the Face Breaker. This was a legendary weapon that you could get as part of Steel Rain again. And there was an issue where crafting this particular legendary had to be turned off in the previous version of the game. Now this has been changed, so the patch notes say that the crafting requirements for the legendary facebreaker power fist now properly include two legendary modules and the ability to craft this item has been re-enabled at weapons workbenches. So for what, if for whatever reason you got rid of your particular facebreaker that you already get when you complete the uh, the quest line, like you get an actual facebreaker that you don't need to craft, if you got rid of that already or if you wanted to make another one for whatever reason, you now can actually do so in the game at a weapons workbench. So that is a really nice fix. And finally, we're at number 10, the last fix that I want to highlight in today's video. And this one again is pertaining to those of you who have already completed this season in 76 and you started to obtain the repeatable re rewards that were introduced in Steel Rain. Because if you remember before Steel Rain, when you completed a season and all the scoreboard, you could still do your challenges technically, but you would get score and it would lead to nothing. Now, when you've completed the season and you keep doing your challenges and get score, there are certain rewards that you could get. And one of those particular rewards were atoms and there was a particular issue where if you were trying to obtain those atoms you wouldn't you weren't able to get it there was something going wrong there but now that issue has been resolved and even for those of you that missed out on certain atoms when you were doing those repeatable challenge rewards you can now actually get go back and get those atoms that you missed so in particular the the patch notes say the following rank up rewards fixed an issue that prevented players from earning atom rewards offered by certain ranks beyond uh, rank 100 players who were affected by this issue will be able to revisit uh, the season scoreboard to claim their missing atoms as soon as they completed any daily or weekly challenge following today's update. So if you did encounter this issue and you wanted to obtain those atoms that you missed beyond rank 100, 
All you need to do, as it says there, is complete a, uh, any daily or weekly challenge and you'll be able to go back and get that. And then moving forward, you're able to actually successfully, you know, obtain the, the rewards beyond rank 100, including Adams this time around. So hopefully that fixes this issue for all of you out there. Alrighty way Ascenders, that is all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video, but before we conclude, I want to make sure that I thank all the new members that we've had to the channel ever since we opened up live streaming. So to Chris, Dakar, Grim576, Diothan Gaming, Adam Goodrich, Shogun Flame, Bloodfart, Corbs, Ryoku, Cursed Illusion, Mr. Cookie, Kaza, Heretic Shark, Valathor, Jackek, uh, Slamanizer, great name, and Not Ben. Thank you to all of you who have become members on the channel. You're really supporting me, especially with the streams. It was just insane the first stream that we had. Um, we had like 250 plus of you watching at one stage. So for those of you that specifically became members, I want to thank you so much for becoming a member and joining the channel. And for those of you that would like to join, there is a link in, in the description below. You get some fun emotes especially and some thanks at the end of my videos. So until next time, this has been the Lone Bot Wanderer. Please take care of yourselves and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.